Rick Grinnell with us. He's joining us now on the phone. He's actually out in Arizona. He's also taking a close look at what's happening in Nevada right now uh, with that race as well. Great to hear from you, Rick. Uh, and, and, and we just want to preface this conversation. You're going to say some things right now which might make people's eyes bug out of their heads, but you have seen this data, Rick, and you have been on the ground there for over a year, very closely watching this race. So tell us what you anticipate happening as these votes continue to be counted in Arizona. Take us kind of through the races from the top, from the governor uh, down to the Senate race and also with the attorney general's race, Rick. Well, John, thanks for having me. Let, let's just be clear. I'm going to give you data. I'm not going to give you my opinion. Let me just be very specific on the data. And the reality is, right now that uh, we have at least 450,000, possibly 500,000 ballots now left. We started last night with about a million ballots left. Those are almost exclusively election day voters, which we know are traditionally Republican. The last four or five dumps, of these votes, taking us from a million down to about 450,000 where we are right now. The Republican team has been winning those by 65, 70, 75 percent in each of the dumps. We now, just so you have the exact data, Abe Hamaday, the attorney general candidate, is leading the Republican field here because he's only down by 3,900 votes. The next one right after Abe is Kerry Lake, and Kerry is only down by 12,000 votes. Blake Masters is down by 90,000 votes. Out of those 450,000 at least, if you calculate that we are winning Let's take the lowest percentage of the night that we've seen, 60%, 65. All three of these candidates are going to win, including Secretary of State Mark Fincham. This is going to be a red wave. I, I am absolutely confident that Carrie Lake will be governor of Arizona. Abe Hamaday will be the attorney general of Arizona. And I believe that we are on the cusp of seeing Blake Masters completely upset the East Coast media, take that 90,000 vote uh, deficit right now and turn it into a win. And we will then have a Republican controlled Senate because the reality is right next door in Nevada, Joe Lombardo is going to be the Republican governor knocking out Sisolak, the Democrat. And Adam Laxalt is going to be the U.S. Senator from Nevada, knocking out Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto. That red wave is very strong in Nevada and Arizona. And again, Rick, I just want to emphasize what you already emphasized for our audience. This is not a prediction. This is not your opinion. You are basing this call and your projection that Kerry Lake, Blake Masters, Abe Hamaday, and, and Mark Fitchum as well, who's running for Secretary of State, they will all win their races as Republicans in Arizona. This is all based on data that you've seen. This is based on the data that is on, that everybody can go look at on the Secretary of State's website. And as you know, the recorder this morning held a press conference and he himself said that they, uh, they couldn't believe it of how many election day votes that they have. There is 450,000 votes, at least election day votes. And we have been winning all of those votes. The Republicans have been winning those by overwhelming margins. Well, you know, Rick, we've heard uh, from a lot of people, including a lot of the mainstream media, talking about this red wave that never materialized. But uh, you, you don't see it that way. I mean, you, you, people talk about well, maybe the disappointment in New York, but you could look at a couple of those congressional races that turned for Republicans, including the DCCC chair. Uh, he lost his race uh, most likely to a Republican. So, you know, we don't really have, I think, and I, maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't, but, but what this, the big picture actually look like, looks like still uh, the day after Election Day. I, you know, I think my mom would tell you that when I was in second grade, I was always saying to the teacher, uh, why are you saying that? <laughs> what? Prove it to me. What do you mean? I'm somebody who doesn't go along with the crowd. I want to be data driven. I want to look at the information for myself. Once somebody tells me something, I'm still saying, well, what's your source? Let me go look at it. Mm -hmm. And and the reality is, is 
if you would have told me a couple of nights ago that the Republicans will win the House and the Senate, it will flip to red, I would say that's a red wave. Uh, but we've got the entirety of the East Coast media. Remember, they all live in New York or Washington, D.C., and and they are looking at their neighborhood. They're looking at the disappointment that they have uh, from the New York governor's race and the Pennsylvania Senate race. And while those two races are disappointing, um, let's just dig down into the New York numbers. There is a historic win in New York for the first time ever, George Santos, an openly gay Republican has won a seat. There will be an openly gay Republican Congress member for the first time entering Congress in the history of our country. You also, in New York, knocked out the head of the DCCC, the Democratic Congressional Committee, who was in charge of the Democratic elections. He's been defeated. So I think you see good news. I think also the East Coasters are disappointed in seeing Tudor Dixon in Michigan, who gave an incredible run. And while I'm disappointed that Tudor didn't make it, that race in Michigan spent millions and millions of dollars on abortion and scaring women. And so I think we always say all politics is local. You have to look at each state individually. But there is no question in my mind that when the Republicans take over the House and the Senate, that is a red wave. And then you go and you look at Arizona and Nevada. Look, Carrie Lake was, was, if she is, the one candidate that everybody says is the Donald Trump candidate. He endorsed her early, and she is going to be the governor of uh, Arizona. And you did Let's see, also, Rick, you did already start to see the national media asking her about <laughs> the potential of a vice presidential run with Donald Trump. So you do see her star power on the rise. we got to stay tuned, though. And as we told you last night, stay tuned with us because the storylines are still evolving. The data is still coming in. The votes are still being counted. And we still have these three undecided Senate seats to talk about. Rick Rennell, great to have you with us, and thank you for briefing us on the real situation on the ground in Arizona. Thanks so much, Rick. Always great to talk to you. All the best, John.